Hello everyone, welcome to my studio in Montreal and welcome to our live video on the Monday. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. So uh, today, instead of like uh, we're doing that regular way, so regular, I preparing my sketch, preparing the paper. So that's what I'm doing normally and we start to paint directly. Uh, this time I want to show you all the process from the beginning to the end. Uh, that's why uh, I will try to fit in one hour. I will try to paint it fast. And today we're going to the Amsterdam. So, you know, uh, I'm traveling a lot. And times to times, even if I'm going to Italy, for instance, or some different country in Europe, my airplane from Canada, from Montreal, stops in Montreal. Times to times. And if I have that chance, I am always make a big break between flights just to have like around five seven hours uh, to walk on amsterdam because the the city is just you know it's like a made for artists it's extremely beautiful and i'm always takes a ton of photos sometimes sketching so th that's very nice city and i want to invite you today to make a trip with me to that uh, town and by the way uh, i hold a workshop in that city in amsterdam it will be, uh, let me check uh, exact date, uh, because it's, uh, it's a lot of events this year. So I, I will be in Amsterdam in July from 7 to uh, 9, three days. We will be one day in the studio, uh, Daria Mita, very nice studio, great equipment and absolutely nice place. And two days we're going to make plein air if the weather will be good. If not, we're back to the studio. Because uh, the studio, by the way, in downtown, in the old part of the city, with a beautiful view. So, if you have a chance, join me to the trip. Uh, if not, uh, I will post a lot of photos and some videos uh, from the workshop, so you can imagine what you are with me. For sure, I couldn't teach in that case, but you can enjoy the view of the Amsterdam. So, this is our subject, as I say. And for now, I'm start to preparing the sketch first by pencil. And uh, by the way, during all the process, any time, if you have any questions, just uh, tape it in chat. I have a technical support and I will know your questions and we can talk. So this is our picture and you should know my idea why I choose that. First of all, it's very recognizable, you know, it's like a, like a trademark. But uh, if we will be here, then we will be here uh, on the plein air. We couldn't paint exactly that picture because uh, the bridge where I took that photo, it's very narrow. We couldn't be in group there. So that's why uh, I really want to paint that because there is no chance to paint it in real from this point of view. And it's a kind of complicated picture. It's a lot of subjects here and uh, it's look like really really complicated and my idea is uh, to simplify that because uh, we have uh, like around half an hour to paint that for all the job and we have to find a way how to make it really really simple S not uh, explain all the details but i will try to explain my feeling about that place and spirit of amsterdam i'm really like that city and again, any questions, just let me know. And by the way, we have uh, 70 people now. If you don't mind, please uh, put the like, click the like, because that helps other people to find our video and they, we can talk. And for me, it's important and it's a great beginning of the week. So, if you don't mind, give us a like. Hello, Quebec! You know, we have a lot of snow here uh, in Quebec because I'm living in Quebec and uh, I'm really enjoyed to see that you see that green trees. It's like we're back to the summer. Hello, New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. 
So with a sketch, I can say it's done. We don't have to do more. I just measure my space, nothing special. And you see on the picture, uh, like these bridges right on the center, uh, we have an equal part. It's like we cut the paper on the two times. I don't like it. That's why I put it a little bit higher. So we keep less spy, uh, space for sky, more from the reflection. I like the reflection. And now that's uh, normally it's invisible. Uh, but today, as I say, I want to show the process. You see, that's the dry paper. Uh, Saunders water fort, 300 grams. And I make the sketch on the back side. The uh, real front side paper is that. So what I'm going to do, I just keep the paper like this. Use my favorite beautiful brush to wet the back side. So I'm just preparing my paper. Hello, Ontario. Hello, Pittsburgh. So one important thing, you see, uh, I wet the back, but uh, we couldn't start to paint right now. We need the time. So the water have to go in deep inside the fibers, inside the paper. That's why uh, I beg to wet my paper again and again, like maybe five, ten times. And we have to wait at least five minutes before we start. Better to wait ten minutes, but because I'm trying to save uh, your time. So don't start to paint directly. Your paper is still not ready. Passions. It's very important. So that's why I beg to that, to wet it again, again and again. And... Uh, because we have to wait, I can tell you about the colors what I'm using for uh, this project. Uh, nothing special. It's my set of the Daniel Smith pigments. Here is it. You can find that box in a lot of stores in the United States, in Canada, in Europe. Um, that, that's the colors what I'm using here. So this is my troll palette. It's always, you see, a little bit dirt. I clean it a little bit uh, today, special for sky. But normally I never clean my palette, it's always dirt. The new one looks like that. So that's the new palette. Uh, this, uh, my working palette, we just pretend what we are traveling because it's real travel to Amsterdam. So I want to remind you the main colors what I'm using here. This is the Queen of Cardone Siena, Pyrene Violet and Indigo. This is mine primary colors. I'm using them a lot, it's almost eating them. And plus, today we use cobalt, thalo blue green shade, and thalo green blue shade. So, totally, uh, we have uh, six colors for whole that project. You see, it's a beautiful colors of the sky here. Uh, just this real thalo, amazing. And a little bit purple clouds. It's a brilliant combination and very nice light. And the same we repeat here, plus indigo, which make our mix a little bit darker. So that's the plan. And as I say, you can ask any questions anytime. Okay, and uh, the brushes what we use uh, today, uh, this is my main tool, so always the set what I'm using, uh, five lines flat brush, three liners, uh, and calligraphy brush, rod. And uh, today also I will use the uh, my travel brush, this is a real Kalinsky, a pointy brush, I will use that for the some details, very nice stuff. And you see I continue to wet the paper. Okay, uh, great question about uh, can you join the workshops? Uh, yes, doesn't matter what level you have because uh, you know I'm trying to organize my workshops almost like a private classes. Seriously, I'm I just the job for uh, each person for each level, and always uh, everybody have a personal advice from me. So yes, if you are on the great like a high level or you just beginner. Uh, Welcome to the workshop. 
again, the program will be adjusted. I can tell you more. For my opinion, it's very important uh, to start to paint watercolor uh, on the right place on the workshop, personally, because the right start is important. Uh, for sure, if you use like a good books or good mentor, teacher, uh, that's possible. Workshops, it's like you're going in the process very deep and that helps a lot to, to starting growing up. So welcome, I will be happy. Okay, great question about what kind of board uh, I use uh, when I'm painting. So this is it. Uh, it's a PVC board, plastic, uh, something around six millimeters. Uh, it's not heavy, and that's why I'm using that when I'm traveling, but it's extremely strong. And I like the black matte colors here. I use the same, uh, you see, sometimes the big size, that one. You see, it's attached the uh, the plate for the tripod. And the same I use for the planner. Different sizes. So it's it's brilliant. By the way, you can find it on my website. For me, it's like uh, one of the best tool for that, for to support the paper. Black colors, matte, not heavy and pretty strong. So uh, you see, I wet the paper uh, another one time. And uh, how I understand is my paper is ready or not. I'm just trying to uh, feel, is it soft or not? For now, it's still strong. So we need to wait a couple of minutes more. It have to be soft, almost like a paper towel, like this. So that means there is no air, all the fiber soft, and my paper will be ready to take the water and the pigments. So that's why we're back to that again and again. Hello, Niederland. Hello, Finland. Hello London, UK. We have a people around the world. That's awesome. Thank you very much for joining me today. Hello Italy. So look, uh, I put the paper on the board and before I am start to paint, I have to do a few more things. First of all, I use just a paper towel to press the paper like that. So my job for now to remove the air between paper and the board completely. I press it like this. And in the end, I remove the extra water on the perimeter. And before I start to paint, I will use my tape to fix the paper on the board. So in that case, all the process, your paper will be flat. And that's very comfortable. Yes, uh, yes, Anna, for sure we can see the reference photo. Just a second, I will show you. Here is, the, I couldn't keep it here on the table, but what I can do, I can keep it like this. You can uh, make like something like a print screen. In that case, this photo will be in front of your eyes. Plus the same photo I use on the poster, so you can find it on the Facebook, Instagram. And because it's uh, the photo I took myself, feel free to use it. No copyright. Hello, Denmark. Hello Argentina, that's fantastic, we have people around the world, that's great. So you see, just now I can start to paint, my paper is ready, it's fixed, it's dry on top, it's a lot of water inside, so we are ready. And you know the golden rules about the watercolor we're always starting to paint from the light and going down because the water 
moving in that direction and I'm star from the sky as I say we have uh, some spots here with the beautiful phthalo pigments that's why I clean my palette to use that nice bright color Um, okay, I'm painting on the back side uh, on, on the Sanders Water Fort. Uh, the reason is simple. Uh, I use the rough paper and the texture of the rough paper uh, on the front side, uh, honestly, for my opinion, not exactly nice. It's uh, too, uh, too strong, too visible. The back side, a little bit more softly. So finally, I can say the back side of the uh, rough paper Sanders Water Fort it's something between rough and cold press. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. Hello, friends. By the way, you see, uh, for now I'm painting the sky and I like the sky. Uh, in Amsterdam, it's uh, not really sunny city, but the clouds and the sky are always so beautiful. So I'm really enjoying And I have a lot of photos about the sky in Amsterdam. And by the way, uh, on a website sketchingacademy.online you can find the information about the workshop about exactly how to paint the sky in watercolor. The workshop will be uh, in March if I'm right, so we'll find all the information there. And hello Texas! Wow! And you see uh, here I use the sky also like a negative space to keep my lights. So that's why I paint here around the, my towers. That's my negative space. Great question about what angle have my board. It's something around, it's very, uh, very soft angle, something around uh, three, five degrees, almost flat, but that's enough to use the gravity because the gravity is our friend, definitely. Hello, Greece. Yeah, the lights here for me is one of the most important part of that picture. So that's why I pay attention for the negative space to build that correctly. And we back to blend it. Hello, Germany. Hello, Malta. Wow, that's truly around the world. That's great. We have uh, more than 100 people for now online. Thank you very much for joining me today. And uh, if you don't mind, please give us a like. It helps other people to find that video. I appreciate it. Hello, Delaware. So we're almost done with the sky. I don't have to pay attention for sky more. Uh, you know, that's it's. I use the sky here to make a reflection, but this photo, not exactly about the sky. That's why I uh, leave the less space for sky and focusing more on the reflection on the water because it's really, really look beautiful. And uh, now the step is pretty f strange, uh, so I don't want to paint the shape, but I'm preparing the background and build the main shapes here. So, and I blend everything together. So the trees, sky, buildings is just one big shape. Hello, Spain. Welcome. Hello, Belgium. Uh, 
as I say, we blend everything together. And I still use uh, times to times cobalt for the walls. And you see the combination between quinacridone sienna and the cobalt, it's a great combination to make the soft light. And grayish light, not that simple. So it's a nice complicated color. And uh, that very important mix, uh, if you uh, go into the Amsterdam, you will see that colors almost everywhere. It's a very nice combination here. See, all that colors, what we have for my feeling and for my palette inside have a pure violet. So that's what I use for my mixes. Somewhere a little bit with a cobalt, somewhere less cobalt. Hello, Turin. And I use a dry brush to make the nice texture here. And still blend everything together. Hello, Dallas. I change my mix all the time just to make it interesting. So you see it's like a combination between from one side we, we use a dry brush, from the second side we blend everything so and make a soft connection and soft gradients. It's like a game. I continue to use the different colors and now I'm make it a little bit more darker. But no worries, I back to that to apply another one layer. So we just preparing our picture. Hello Thailand. I still use the big brush because I care about the big shapes for now only. And slowly I'm going down. See, it's all, all the time it's the, the same colors, but the combination a little bit different all the time. So that make it like interesting. And for my feeling, the limited numbers of colors all the time make the process, uh, you know, combine everything together in the same moment, make the picture look like a mosaic, a lot of different things inside. And that's look cool. Uh, well, Pat, if you don't have a, a thalo green colors, which I recommend to use because it's really colorful and nice stuff for uh, mixes about the green colors, uh, you can use the Viridian green, but depends on the brand, which kind of brand you use, because uh, the colors sometimes look completely different. S or uh, you can use a thalo uh, blue color, what I have here, and use that with uh, any kind of but transparent yellow, like a Indian yellow or uh, quinacridone deep gold, that works. <laughs> uh, thank you for the question about my uh, my second name. Okay, the correct spelling is Solovyev. Yeah, I, I know it's not easy to say, but if you make it at once after that, uh, it will be more easy. Thank you for question. I leave the board here like a line and I'm going to paint for now the reflection. 
in the water because for me it's one of the most interesting part and reflection have to be much darker uh, than I, what I did on top plus I will plan to put another one layer here so that's why it have to be really really dark things hello Istanbul hello Toronto welcome Hello, Florida. Hello, Bangladesh. That's game with water. I'm, I'm really enjoyed to do that all the time. It's something incredible. How with just a few strokes, we can make illusion of the water reflection and all that stuff. It's a really interesting game and uh, that's why I use the phthalo color in the sky because I want to use that in the water as well and it's still combination uh, dry brush and soft blending everything together hello Malaysia Hello Saudi, we have a lot of people, that's really great, thank you very much for joining me today, appreciate it. Yeah, uh, Karen, thank you very much for the comments, yes, I really like the uh, Thalo colors, uh, they are very powerful colorful concentrate you need just a little bit to create the bright and transparent mixes so really nice colors see i'm, I'm moving a little bit like a snake uh, i'm starting from here move there and now back to the first part the reason is i'm trying to combine everything together and blend so for this uh, my mix have to be wet and soft so that's why it's like a Snake, snake moving like slowly. As I said, that beautiful view is impossible to paint uh, if we will be uh, on my if you will be, will be on my workshop in Amsterdam just because, uh, as I say, the the bridge is very narrow. We couldn't stand in with a group on that, but we can took a photo and paint like this in the studio. But if you have a chance, uh, anyway, join me because uh, the view, everything is paintable here. You know, uh, in in that city. Each corner, it's like a piece of art, really. And we can paint all of that. So you see, I have to back to that part because it's the pigments going inside. I have to back to that if I want to keep it darker. Because the workshop will be in uh, July, in the beginning of July. You can find the information on my website. I'm not sure uh, what kind of uh, weather will be in that moment. That's why uh, we have uh, like insurance. We will be in the beautiful studio uh, in the old part of the of the city. So if the weather will be bad, we can stay inside and enjoy the very comfortable space made special for. It's a Dariamita studio, a beautiful one, and it's fully equipped special for watercolor.
Um, about the colors, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, what selection I make for uh, my reflection? You see, I use the same colors like we have on top. I just make it a little bit more darker. So th that's how it works, because the, uh, the water have her own color. Uh, plus, it's a reflection, it's not like a perfect mirror. The reflection is darker. That's why, uh, you know, I'm, I know what I want to use here. I use the same colors, just make it darker. That's the, the reason. And I'm always change my mix just to keep it look interesting. Uh, thank you for the question how I control the uh, water on my brush, on my paper. You know, the truth is I, I do not control it. Absolutely not. So, so uh, this I leave, uh, you know, uh, watercolor process, painting by watercolor, it's like uh, we have a partner. The water makes the big job for me, so I'm not trying to control my partner. I'm not trying to push my partner. I'm just trying to use what partner doing. So for my feeling, it's a good relationship. I trust my partner. If the water did something, I can use it not destroy it. So for my feeling, it's the uh, really, really good relationship. Hello, Puna. And a few more wash out to make you see that uh, you, I believe you know my brush It's very specific. I can make it very pointy. You see, so almost like a knife now, just by fingers. And that's perfectly col collect the pigments like this. So I can easily make reflection if I need it. And the last collection here. Okay, uh, thank you for the question about uh, education. You know, I took the full-time education in Russia. It's a pretty strong education. And for sure, the watercolor was part of that. But it was a, a long time ago, and the technique things what we learned was a different, more traditional, not what I'm doing now. So uh, yeah, I, I couldn't say what I uh, I learned myself. No, I took the education, but uh, a lot of things uh, was my like a personal discovering. And about the artists, I can give you a lot of names. It's very hard to spe specify just a few. So, what I will do now, I don't want to uh, touch reflection anymore. Uh, I have to dry that to organize this space, because this is my main subject and it have to be done uh, more carefully. Just a few more last touching, because I know what here I will plan to make the dark shadow. So, uh, to make the right reflection before I make this, I have to make that the same dark shadow there. And the last washout. So now I make it dry, and after this we back to uh, to that process and focusing on our main part. So sorry, I turn off sound because it's really really noisy.
Okay, we're back. Uh, you see my paper, uh, not 100% dry, but it's dry enough on top. The pigments connected to the fibers, I can apply the second layer. And uh, I, I saw the question, uh, how often I change my water? Never. Because now it's look like a dirt, but believe me, uh, because uh, each layer a little bit darker, that's transparent and clean enough for the next step. So we don't have to change it. So now I switch to the calligraphy brush and I start to paint these main things. As I say, uh, that's, uh, think about this like a, a, an advice, an exercise, how to simplify the object. I don't want to create all the details and we don't have to. So I just make it uh, explanation of the light without the strong details. Because in other cases, you know, it looks stressful. On this picture, we have a lot of nice things here. Hello, Lewis. Hello, Japan. Hello, Switzerland. Wow. People around the world, I appreciate it. Thank you for very interesting question. How I, uh, how I built the project, you know, it's uh, one of the most important question. Uh, so I'm I'm trying to understand why I like that photo. What's the point? Why I stop and decide to paint it? If I find the right answer, I know what to do. So for me, it, that works exactly like that. But uh, what's the first step? What the second step? Uh, it's impossible to explain. If it will be like a very simple, like a mathematics game, um, you know, we can produce a lot of paintings without problem. So it's always uh, like more about the feeling. But the question is great. Thank you. Montreal. <laughs> Welcome. Hello, San Salvador. Look, uh, the trick is, again, it's a lot of details here on the photo. What I want to do, I want to build a silhouette of this of the city, uh, what I see here. So that's why I play in the game now. I prepare the bright mix here. I make some part of the tree like this and after that use just the brush and water to blend it hello italy so that means you see it's already look like a tree and i don't have to do something more about that but what i can do i can build the bottom part of the tree but without green uh, i need the dark purple mix here and we create the shape of the tree like this so the, for now it's like a negative space for that and again i blend it Perth, hello, Australia. Uh, that was a remarkable time when I was there with a the workshop. So thank you very much for your message. And I will be there again in the end of the year. So I truly love that country. And right now I'm continuing to build the bridge. I still use the flat brush for now.
Hello, Barcelona. And by the way, you know the, the trick and the idea why I use the, uh, the flat brush like this for this detailed job? Because it's uh, not that easy to control. That means uh, my strokes are more loose itself. Um, I, I can say I'm cheating, you know, <laughs> because that's more easy to do it like that way. And that's why all the strokes look pretty alive. Again, uh, I'm, I'm always working not alone. So sometimes the bigger part of the job made by water. Sometimes the job made, made by brush. So I'm just trying to uh, uh, choose the good partners to make my job. Hello, Tyrell. Hello, Crane. Hello, Indonesia. You see, I just make some dark strokes like this. And they starting to see like some, we have some details here, which is not true. There is no details, but I'm trying to use your imagination. And because I make the reflection here dark, special in that case, so I can use the dark colors here. Hello, Brazil. I back to the main subject now. And even here, I don't want to create the details. It's still big shapes. Hello, Germany. You see that combination enough to explain the lights on the building. After that, we just apply a few details with a pointy brush and that will be done. So I'm, I'm really trying to simplify that subject. That's still wet. That's why I can back to that to make some accents. The same I will do on the bottom here, just dark touching. Hello, Trarivia. And immediately I will combine that with the trees again. So I'm continuing to move like a like a snake. Hello, Tennessee. Hello, Austria. So here I'll stop and I want to finish up my two towers, but again, by the very simple touching. You know, by the way, I thank you for your questions and you can ask more because honestly, I'm learning from you too, uh, much more than you from me. Because uh, then you ask in the questions, I have to find the uh, answer and that's how all my books come in. I'm just trying to understand how it works because you're asking me and then I found the answer, I put it in my book. So thank you for your questions. I appreciate it. And it's interesting for me.
So I uh, preparing the shapes of my towers. I backed with with a pointy brush to finish this. So now the game is I want to finish it, the trees here. I want to make the trees. Um, so I'm again use the bright green mix. Different, and that's why I like the tail because it's so colorful, and all the time the mixes are different. So I make you see some accents here, and again use the clear brush clear water to combine that with the background what is done before so that make it look like a mist a little bit and i like that effect and plus we can make a dark green mix and the secret is inside uh, some of the purine violet which make it kind of grayish and nice so complicated really rich combination Hello England. See, that's uh, exactly the pure violet and the phthalo green together. Look how dark is that and how rich is this. Brilliant combination. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, I, I use the flat brush now with a kind of purple mix to create some noise of that part. I don't want to paint all the details again, it's a very complicated view, but some noise I'm going to create with a kind of different colors all the time. And I take the dark mix again here and create the bottom part of the tree. And because this tree, logically, it's close to us, that's why I make it with a bigger contrast. And still, just water. We're back here to finish it our let's say buildings it's not the buildings not the cars it's just noise of the city let's say and we go in here Uh, thank you for your comments and for your kind words uh, about teaching. I appreciate it. Yeah, I like to do that. And again, uh, I'm not just me. Uh, 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 not just you learning from me. I'm learning from you as well. So uh, it's like a double process and I really like it. See, uh, it's like a one line of the trees. If everywhere I make on the bottom something green, dark and special, if I change my mix all the time, that will be enough to explain that without creating one by one all the details. Mm -mm. 
few more touching few more touching and just a few lines to combine that to make the trees look like a trees but even this line I don't I don't want to finish it all of them I just make it look like a again like a ghost few more accents with the different colors inside Okay, Peter, a great question about the, uh, how long my paper can accept the colors and mix. Uh, normally, uh, this 15 by 15 inches. So if we wet the back side, you have around one hour till uh, your paper will be too much dry and couldn't accept that colors like this and you couldn't blend it like that. But uh, at least one hour you have. And it depends on the brand. Uh, we're talking about the uh, Sanders Water Ford. Um, other papers have a different possibilities, not like this. So what I will do now, uh, I can say like a bigger part is organize it. Uh, I don't have to spend more time for all this, but I still need a nice details, special somewhere here. That's why I make it dry another one time and switch to the pointy brush to create the details. So we're going to dry it. Thank you for your comments about my brushes. I appreciate it. I'm really happy to know what you like it because, you know, these brushes uh, change my life and change my style a lot. And for now, it's a lot of like a top level artist around the world in watercolor use that brush because that, that's something very specific. But for now, I switch to uh, another one brush, what I'm really like as well. This is a real Kalinsky. This is from that set. Uh, for now you can find that set it's three different size brushes i use them for travel uh, too you can find that brushes on my website it's a good quality it's a real kalinsky and you see it's a very pointy brush so we can create the very nice details now almost from nothing and because this brush can dance it's very pointy as i say And uh, because it's it's Kalinsky, and the same moment, I can uh, make like big strokes, not just a small touching. Because this job, what I'm doing now, can be done by liner, but this brush also can wash like this, in the same moment. So everything is possible, and I'm really like that. Yes, and thank you for your question about the Sanders, the comments about the Sanders paper. Yes, you're right. Uh, that's, that's the reason. For instance, the Fabriano paper have a, a lot of glue inside. That's why uh, the, uh, the uh, Fabriano paper keep the colors very bright, but the price, what we pay for that, it's drying so fast and you couldn't blend the colors like I'm doing here. But you can keep the bright colors. So it depends your style you have to, or your project. You have to choose the right paper. I prefer uh, the Sanders Water Ford because I, I like to blend. 
if you prefer a uh, like a multi-layering painting with a brightly colors better to use something like uh, the Fabriano paper so it's always depends of the uh, of the style but and you write <clears throat> this uh, this paper have a less glue inside and talking about the arches uh, the arches are more close to the uh, to the Saunders paper but yes you're right it's more glue and they, that's why it's drying faster compared to the Saunders Waterford so the Saunders is still my favorite paper Uh, great question. Uh, <laughs> what kind? Yes, normally I, I can say I, I use the rough paper 80% uh, for the some specific job. Uh, if I need a very smooth blend and without the dry brush, I switch to the uh, cold press. I never use the hot press paper, never ever, but cold press it. Yes, times to times I use that. And just in the end, what I need now, I need the uh, pointy liner. To finish at this so I use the rod liner and we're gonna dance it to create small pointy touching yeah thank you for <laughs> For your comments, Agnieszka, uh, yes, I will be in Fabriano in Bologna this year, definitely. Uh, I couldn't miss that festival. It's uh, truly one of the most important watercolor festival uh, around the world. So I will be there. And yeah, I'll bring a little bit brushes with me because I hold a few workshops before and after in Europe. So I will travel with my brushes. And if you need them, yeah, I can bring it to you. I like that pointy stuff. Uh, yeah, great question about uh, wet paper in the <laughs> completely in the shower. It's great if if you don't want to keep the front side dry like I did because I like that dry brush strokes what I keep like clear paper if I'm painting wet on wet yes I just put my paper in the shower and that's it but this time I use the dry brush that's the reason but you're right it's very nice to introduce the uh, the water and paper they have to know each other before we start to paint And the last thing uh, what I want to do here, because for me it's look like organized, uh, to make uh, to focus in on this, I want to make this part a little bit darker. Uh, it's impossible to make it in the first step uh, because it was a wet paper and all the pigments going inside very deep. But I can do it now. So now I take the another one dark green mix and again use a dry brush to make the final touch there and pretty dark. So that helped me to show the reflection better. And as I say, I want to use the dry brush to combine that to my painting. It's like another one kind of texture, but not everywhere. You see, my brush is clean now, I just blend it like this. But somewhere after that, I use the water and combine that to the layer what was done before. So it's like a coming from here, but I add the dry brush. And a few more lines to combine that to the board. The same thing I want to do 
here. It's like, you know, the last step, we um, reorganize what it was done. It's just a question of the, more about the composition. So I like the dark strokes because they help us to focus in on the light here. And a lot of details we just ignore, but we organize the space and make a reflection. And that was important for me. So I believe that done. And by the way, if you follow uh, um, the same uh, trick what I'm using to wet the backside of the paper, uh, do not remove the tape for sure. We have to wait uh, um, half of the day, 12 hours, something like that, before your paper will be dry completely. After that, if you remove the tape, it will be flat and uh, ready for exhibition or for your walls. So. If you have any questions, I'm still here. Uh, if not, uh, this video uh, will be available on the YouTube uh, after we finish our demo, so you can back to that as many times as you want. It's for free. And if you have a chance, as I said, to join my workshop in Amsterdam, welcome. Uh, it will be not that fast painting all the time because we have, a, as I say, one day in the studio, two days on the plein air, and we have a lot of time to slowly paint together to explain uh, all the details to make all our paintings very nice and for sure i'm share all my secrets all the techniques and bring some materials for sure so if you have a chance join me and uh, by the way if you have more questions after that video uh, we finish it, our broadcast video will be uploaded on the youtube you can ask the questions in the comments and I will find the time to answer you. So, thank you very much for your time, patience, and stay healthy. See you next Monday. Bye-bye.